So what exactly is universal design for learning? Well, since it's based on universal design, we can pretty much go with that same definition and just add that for learning. But in particular, UDL is based on two assumptions. The first lies in research suggesting that learning involves three specific areas of our brains. And the second, that there's not only one way to learn. These assumptions are embodied within three UDL principles, providing multiple means of engagement, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of representation. Now, usually we see these three principles lined up like this with three different images of the brains. I also like to look at it like this because we don't have three different brains. It's all different parts of the same brain, and these are different networks that work together. So the central networks in this image are the affective. They are related to caring about why we are learning. And at the front, we can see the strategic networks or how we're going to go about learning. And towards the back are the recognition networks. And that's where we recognize what we're learning. So these three principles from UDL come along with some guidelines that can be helpful when we're looking at how we're going to be providing choice when we design our learning environments and our learning situations. And what about this idea of there's not only one way to learn? Because that brings along with it the idea that there's not only one way to teach. So how do we address that? An integral element of each one of those principles has to do with choice, but remembering not too much because that can be really overwhelming. However, if you're able to provide a certain amount of choice in regards to why we're engaging with content, with what we're learning, as well as how we're gonna be learning, then I think we're really beginning to encompass the flexibility, equity, and accessibility that is really at the heart of universal design for learning. What is unique about this approach is that quite often in our classrooms, we respond to different needs and it's very much a reactive approach. By responding to different needs, we create accommodations based on the needs that are presented to us. UDL is very proactive in that we anticipate the possible needs when we are building our courses and learning situations. Because of this, it actually relieves some of the pressure on the teacher so that while learning is happening, we don't need to stop and try to figure out how to make it work for different people. We just plan for that from the get-go. By anticipating obstacles and planning for opening access to learning, we can maintain that balance between instruction and learning that is really at the heart of a student-teacher relationship.